Welcome back to Modern Art Blitz. I'm your host, Matt Gleason. And this is our 81st episode. We interviewed Peter Hess. Later in the show, we'll be talking to David Rubin. But right now, Danny Dodge. Danny, how you doing? I'm doing great. How are you? Good, good, good. Welcome to the show. Welcome to the show. You are showing all over town right now. Or not I'm, even, well, can we say town? or uh, In town, uh, out of town. You are exhibiting quite a bit. Right now, I'd like to think one of the peaks of any artist's exhibition uh, CV, shall we say, is when uh, you showed a museum. And uh, where are you showing right now? I am currently showing at the Lancaster Museum of Art and History in their Moa Cedar location. And I have a solo show there and it's called Personal Territories. I'm also doing community activations in which I am in different parts of Lancaster and I am doing interactive performance pieces, engaging the community in thinking about home and what home means to them. So uh, why home? Home is one of the sort of enduring themes of my work, home, uh, formation of identity, and the ideas that go into that, who we are. And also, everybody has a home. I mean, everybody comes from somewhere and, and, and everybody can relate to it. It's a great point of departure. So tell us what we're looking at here. Well, right there, I was looking at my face, but ah. now, <laughs> um, right now we're looking at a piece that I did for LA Pride in 2015. It was called Confess. And for that work, I um, created a confessional and it was in the middle of a 20 by 20 foot black room. People came and confessed to me in the, uh, the name of art and they told me things about themselves, things they hadn't told anybody else. And then with that, I typed it onto a gold piece of paper and then posted it anonymously all throughout the room. And all through the weekend, people were coming and reading about... Other people's confessions? Oh yeah. And they were spicy. Now, did the chief of police show up to go, all right, we're going to solve some crimes here. <laughs> I did have someone confess to a murder, but I told him I'm not the right person. Yeah, yeah There's a uh, cop right outside. You can go yikes. chat with him. Okay. Well, um, but it was great. It was an incredible experience. It was beautiful. Um, it also was recognized by Americans for the Arts as the, one of the outstanding art projects of the year. Um, nice, and nice. so that was very cool as well. well. Let's see, you got a lot going on. Let's see what else. Uh, what else we got going on? Uh, there's ooh, where, what and what is this and where is it? Okay, so this is called Ashes. It was part of a solo show that I had um, recently in San Diego at HB Punto Experimental. The show was called After Fear, and this is a piece that I created. Um, the whole show was about fear and its impact on the soul. And with this piece, I cast glass bricks and into each brick were the ashes of people's fears that I had burned. Ooh. And Man, so- you're, you're, you're getting deep on this here. You got the confessions, <laughs> you got the fears. And, okay. and so then I built those fear, you know, so each glass brick was stacked. And so you have actually a wall of the remnants of fear. And this isn't really necessarily your artwork when you involve that many people. It's their artwork too, exactly. right? Exactly. I think art is part what you do, but it's also part of how people engage with it. Do you believe in the collective unconscious? I do. You do? I do. Okay. Are you making the art of your time? I believe I am. I'm making the art that needs to be made in my time. We've never been more connected and yet we've never been more disconnected well and and, and yes and, and and individualistically so almost mm -hmm. by choice and so uh, how big is this uh, this piece is about eight feet by actually probably yeah eight feet by maybe four feet oh it looks so monumental here like, well, like it, thank could be, you. it could be like this you know, <laughs> I, I was thinking it was like, like at well least at some point it became high, a danger and the, the gallerist was yeah. a little concerned well, about let me it tell you, let me so. tell you. Accidents happen, even yeah. in art galleries. Yeah. So, well, let's see what else you brought, because you brought a lot of uh, a lot of good stuff here. Oh, where it's like we're sitting in the room. It's, okay. Oh, okay. There's not a so this is there. actually <laughs> at the uh, Lancaster Museum of Art and History, 
Uh, right now. Right now. Right now. Until August 5th. Okay. And this is called Personal Territories. Okay. And the entire floor is a mattress and people can lay on the floor of the museum and it's got a pattern of the mattress pattern stenciled onto it. There is a bed that is levitating um, and there's shoe box underneath. People can take um, blocks and they write their memories on them and then they can hide them in the shoe boxes throughout the room. We also have in this piece... Um, Are you gonna burn, now when, when do you burn everything? I'm not going to burn this one. Uh oh. So she's keeping I, the I only occasionally burn things. <laughs> well, when I can. Um, yeah, and there's in this piece, there's also uh, the cubes are um, the skins of mattresses that people have, you know, lived on, loved on. And then I took them off of the mattress and I sewed them into these cubes that's part of the, the piece as well. Great, great, great. And this is through August. Through August 5th. Through August 5th, out at, at the Museum of Art and History in Lancaster. Correct. The cedar. The Moa ex cedar. Ex explain what Moa so cedar is. The Museum of Land uh, Art and History in Lancaster. Great space, great space. It's fantastic. They currently have a show called uh, Made in Mojave in the main building. Okay. Then I'm across the street in the Moa cedar. Across the street? I thought there was a bowling alley. It's just a little across the street and down the... No, down... Oh, I've been to Moe Cedar. Yes, yeah. I know exactly where... Mo oh, okay. okay. Great. Yeah, that's a great So they've annex. got that. And oh, they've okay. also okay. at the same time... So I've got a big room. And then in the rest of that part of the museum, they have the Cedar Fest, which is their commu annual community art show. It's really cool. It's a beautiful work from people all within that same um, congressional district. And then they have one other museum, which is actually the Western Hotel Museum, which is on the same side. I've been there too, yeah. That's like, you're kind of the little time trap. And going on. I will be doing an activation there oh, wow. on Saturday from 11 to 2. With, are you doing like pioneers? What are you, what are you doing? I, well, this is the, the fourth of my, uh, my activations in the community. And in this one, what I'm doing is people are going to come and tell me a story of a relative or somebody from their past in the family. I will type it up in three sentences. That's my challenge. Oh. And then I am putting, binding it into a handmade book that's also going to be part of the exhibit at Moa Cedar, as have the other activations. The first one, people wrote where they wanted to go in the world on a piece of paper and folded it into a paper airplane and flew it. And that was at the um, air park in Palmdale. Okay. And, then, so, and then I had one that was at the Prime Desert Woodlands. And then yesterday I was at the Lancaster Library. Now we want to associate you with art that engages community, but it's not confined to this region. You just happen to be getting interviewed no, now it's, when it's, you're doing this with the exactly. museum. Exactly. So this is part of a residency that I'm doing with the museum. What other uh, communities have you engaged? Um, I've d Well, I did, of course, you saw Confess, and that yeah. was LA Pride. I've done Perform Chinatown oh, several times. In fact, I think that you participated once, didn't you? I, I can neither confirm nor deny. I think, the did. Of, uh, I think you did. Uh, my job's to report, I think you did. My job is to report on the. It was not super to make fun. The art. Okay. Yeah, he wore one of my buttons. I wore the button. <laughs> I was buttoned up for a day. So well, let's see what else you brought here. All right. Okay. What what what's this? Um, this is at the um, Coos Art Museum in Coos Bay, Oregon. And this was a piece called Unburdened. And they are rocks from different uh, regions of the United States, each in a separate vintage bird cage. <coughs> Why rocks in bird cages? Uh, it's talking about the burdens that we hold and the burdens that we can take apart. And um, so that is kind of talking about how we stick to these groupings and sometimes that's not the best thing for us. We're not, we're not finding ourselves in our true community. We're finding ourselves only in this tiny little group. And so it was about, you know, that sometimes the stifling of family too. Uh -huh. And so people were invited to write their burdens on rocks. And then they put them underneath. You can see the, eleva the rocks that are hanging from the ceiling. And people were invited to put their rocks there. And after the installation was complete and the the show was over then I threw those rocks into the ocean wow so so um, peace is over then 
Duchamp said every artwork has a lifetime. <laughs> you know, it may in some outlive their yeah. lifespan, but yeah. you made sure yours didn't. Yeah, so, yeah. so now, did, was there ever a time when you, as an artist, that you were making like just static objects to sell? Oh yeah, I did that. Yeah, I you, did that you, you know, for a long time. Do you foresee going back, or are you are you embracing uh, social practice? As, I as a, I think when I look at what I want to do as an artist, I think social practice is just more important to me. I loved painting paintings. I mean, I loved it. I love the paint, and I still use that a lot in my work. But I try to create environments that are immersive that people can become a part of and that people are changed by in small ways. I mean, some people are going to just walk away, but other people are changed by it. And I think if art can do that, there's just that true power in it that I want to explore. And that's what I'm doing. And, uh, and delivering s still these experiential objects and installations mm -hmm. that, 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 that certainly qualify as the aesthetic experience. So we have, I think we have one more, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, what's this? <laughs> okay, this is called Peeled and Raw. It first showed at LA Art Corps, and then I did it again um, at my studio during a brewery art walk. And this is the culmination of the piece. Basically, people were peeling the wallpaper from the walls and then they wrote their fears on them. And this is what I burned to make the bricks. More burning. So I took all these. So those are all the fears that people wrote that they tore from the walls and then they threw it on the ground. And then, you know, at the end, it just swept it up and burned for hours and hours. And, and hours. your studio, this is photographed at the brewery art colony? Yes, it is. And so how long have you been there? I've been there for a year and a half, two years. You like living in a community of artists? Love it. Makes a difference? I love it. Yeah, it's great. It's great. As you know from having lived there yourself. Well, you know, like, <laughs> yeah, it was great. But, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 3 a.m.? Oh, sure. <laughs> Play the same album you played last night. Oh, jeez. Oh, yeah, no, no. I, I, I like living at the brewery. I, 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 can, I, can, I can have fun with it now. But yeah. I, I like living at the brewery. There's, there's something to be said for it. Yeah. So, yeah. There's things to be said against it, too, as you, as you know. But... You know, for people who are who's, natural, who's, in who's paying me? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm for it. I'm against it. Who's paying me? Um, so yeah. you're a natural introvert. You're saying I am. I am. So it's like you know, you're forced to actually interact with people by but, living but you're, there. But you're interacting with your peers, your artistic yeah, peers. They're so fantastic. Something to be said. For, and so. you know, a lot of the so in the piece that is at Lancaster, I've got probably 50 shoe boxes. I sourced those all from people within the brewery. I just ah, put out a call. Who has good some source for free art supplies? Your neighbors. <laughs> Who has an extra shoe box I can have? There and I are. was getting piles and piles of shoe boxes, both delivered to my studio, or I was just driving around and picking them up. Well, I heard a rumor that there was only one. Uh, the brewery was only big enough for one shoe box until you came along. <laughs> until so I got there. Don't 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 <laughs> step in the wrong shoe box when you're at the brewery. Hey. Thanks so much, Danny Dodge, for joining us on Modern Art Blitz. We'll be back right after this. That was awesome. <laughs>